Hey everybody, um, someone asked a quick video about how I do my hostess coaching. So obviously, first things first, best place to book a party is at a party when they're in the excitement. Um, I ask everybody who comes to the ordering room, would you like to have a party? If they say they want to have a party, um, we'll lock in a date. I um, also tell them to make sure that it's a date that works for you because I have a no rescheduling policy. Um, this is my only income, so I take it seriously and the majority of money comes from my party. So when I don't party, I don't make money. So I also um, ask them who are they inviting and if they are inviting work friends, it's important to find out when they get paid. So that's not rude. Some people have never had an in-home um, party planned in their house and they don't really know how it works. So asking when they everybody gets paid. Um, um, so you can set the hostess up for success and for you up for success, and then the girls can come and actually get stuff that they want. Um, if I know, you know, if they have kids, to make sure that they schedule on a weekend that they don't have kids, or you know, whatever the situation is, to make sure that it works best. Um, once that's locked in stone, I you know tell them obviously thank you for having me party. I write it in my. Um, day planner and I write everything um sometimes I'll write like the color of their hair uh something particular that makes me remember them to kind of um build rapport later when I call them and then I also write whose party that I know them through I don't know why I just write all that stuff down um their phone number or whatever so I put it in their calendar put it in my calendar and then I discuss the time. So I never put like a 7 o'clock time. The latest I'll do a party is at 6.30 because then we end up starting at 7. So I tell the hostess that what time do you want to start? Um, if she says 7 o'clock, then I say, okay, then we're going to put 6.30 and everything. Even though you and I know that we're going to probably start closer to 7, we're going to tell everybody 6.30 because we know people love to be fashionably late. They also love, love to come and kind of pregame, socialize, have a drink. If they've never seen your house, they want to see your house, whatever the reason is. So I have um, full control of um, setting the party time for a half an hour beforehand. I ask them if they're on Facebook. If they say yes, I say, were you on the Facebook event for this party? Yes, perfect. I will friend request you. And then um, I'll do the exact same Facebook event that we did for Holly Hostess. And I'll post all the funny memes and the swing video and everything that I post on my Facebook events. Mm -hmm. um, I'll make you the host. And the event is private. So no one is going to be able to see it unless they are on the event. She says, perfect. I say, is there anybody who's not on Facebook um, that you want to invite? Sometimes they'll say yes. It depends really on what the age group is. And I say, okay, great. Then I will, um, we can do postcards, okay? Postcards are super, super easy, okay? And this also helps with cancellations. Um, all you're going to do is once we, and Facebook event, everything I do is about two and a half, three weeks before. Anything earlier, and I'll tell those is that people cannot make a commitment. So if I say this date and they, she books the party five weeks out, I say, we're not even going to do it for about another two weeks. And I'll message you, confirm and see if the date works. I'll do the Facebook event and we'll go from there because people have uh, anxiety over making a commitment to a party five weeks from now. They just do. Okay. I should also preface that um, I also have to do a little psychology with the hostess and tell her, don't worry if not everybody RSVP. Some people will never RSVP on Facebook. And I'll also joke and ask the lady who booked the party and say, did you RSVP? And she says no and say, see, but you're here. So don't take it personally if people do not RSVP on Facebook. I don't know. They just don't do it. Back to the postcards. So she wants to do a postcard. I tell her I will text her a text that says, please reply with full name and mailing address for an invite, okay? She has a smartphone. You're gonna copy and paste, however you copy and paste on the phone that you have, text it to everybody, okay? So if you sat there and beep, beep, you got a text message, okay, whatever, you're at work, you're gonna text back immediately your full name and mailing address, okay? Then the hostess is gonna immediately host me back, which is funny because I'm doing this right now with a hostess. So Tiffany, okay, so these are all copy, why is my phone moving? All copy and paste of a couple names that she's already sent. We're doing this right now, okay? I'm going to take those, and I'm lazy, so I have a demo printer, so I actually don't even, like, use a pen. I have the postcards, okay? And I print out on here her, all of her party information. So I have the hostess, the date, the time, which is half an hour before I want to start, where it is, RSVP to the hostess, even though I know people don't RSVP. Then I say, can't come, but want to party. My website, pure romance backslash Tammy Potter, 
then enter post this name party ID and I put the party ID okay so if the girl never comes they're gonna have this fancy little postcard and it's gonna have my contact information she can go to the website okay this is in their hand um, I also then tape it and put it in my planner so then I know who got face or who got postcard event so I can kind of keep track of what hostess coaching path that I'm on and then only if I am with uh, in person when I book the parties nine times out of ten that's where I do it um, I just changed my hostess packet I do how to do a two thousand dollar party that I got somewhere um, I think from Heather pillow it's just one sheet it saves on time I used to hand like a couple of sheets it's overwhelming I wouldn't read anything like that so I always put myself in the position of I would book a party and it just tells all the important stuff that they need to do to have a two thousand dollar party and that's it I don't make it seem like work and then one last thing is I love me some red stamp. So while we're in the room, it literally takes 30 seconds. Once we confirm the date, I will go into my phone, into red stamp. And if you use red stamp, it's super easy. Uh, I just go into my um, scent. And you can see that I have ones that are, I have a couple of them that I use, but one of them just says save the date. And oopsies, wrong one. We'll just say it's not a party without you. Sorry, the glare from my window. And then I edit it, and all I do is do the change the date and the time. That's all I do. So it just says it is a party without you. Get ready for a fun filled night of great woman fun products and a good time. Date the time, and then um, please check Facebook soon for details. And then she immediately sends this to everybody. So you're like, oh, okay, cool. I got a party, whatever, five Saturdays from now. And um, they kind of just keep that in the back of their mind and they save the date. So all these things that are kind of the postcards, the commitment's already out there. People have it. They're not going to cancel. The red stamp, everyone goes in there. They save the date. They kind of already locked it in. And then you go do the Facebook, okay? So all that stuff is done immediately. And then I friend request them, uh, you know, like their statuses, do whatever. Do the Facebook event. I send them a message reiterating that the Facebook event is private and then nobody can see it. Um, and then I'll post the swing video. I post the funny Kim Kardashian picture like, oh, so sorry, you can't uh, make it. Um, so a couple of things like no the who something about who says don't spend so much money at the pure romance party no husband ever um a couple of the ones whatever whatever kind of mood a man whatever the season is so i'll post that kind of stuff um and then i also do phone calls so like the week of the party i will call the hostess like i'm a big like ring ring call you i don't like texting because it only takes a couple minutes and just kind of see how everything's coming along kind of gauge to see if she's excited um how many people she's expecting whatever and i do a lot of parties so i can use this as an excuse and say well i do so many parties and i get confused which i do get confused easily i will i'm telling her that i need to talk to her 24 hours before the party because I can't keep everything straight and I can't remember whose driveway has an alley and a front street parking and all that other jazz. So 24 hours or 48 hours, depending on um, how busy I am. I will call the hostess again and it's just a quick phone call. I'll kind of see if she has a head count. I'll, um, at that point, if she's kind of worried about the amount of people, I say, don't worry. It's still a party if it's as long as it's not just me and you because that's awkward. Those are my words that I say to her, and it is awkward. So um, if we need to invite people, then I might do a last minute, okay, invite a friend, and I'll do a raffle to give something away to entice people. Um, have her text or call people, because not everybody RSVPs on Facebook, and people's notifications might be turned off. So I'll ask her, is she sure that on her, all the people that she invited are the ones that she most likely thought would enjoy this? Are they RSVP'd? Well, they might have their notifications off. Um, and then I'll ask where to park, what preference of door she needs to come into, then I need a private order room and then I'll reiterate, reiterate no men and no kids no baby um, and that I have product with me and then if I have somebody shadowing me I also confirm and make sure that that's okay that she's comfortable with me having another consultant in her house to come shadow me so that's pretty much uh, it I make a really good report at the party and with the ordering room um, and immediately booking the party I think that that helps my cancellation rate and then I kind of give her those options and work with her. If she's younger and all she's doing text messaging, all we might do is red stamp. Um, and that's all we need. And then obviously Facebook, I love me some Facebook. So we'll do the Facebook events. And then if she's old school or a little bit older or if she just likes the paper invites, um, I'll send those to all her friends so that is an investment. I do pay for the 
postcard stamps and I send those out but then again I don't have cancellation rates for those parties and then I also will send her um like a dozen postcards to keep in her purse for anybody that she might have forgot. So people that she might see when she picks up her kids from school or, or gymnastics or she goes to the gym or to the dry cleaners or whoever. She's not friends with Facebook and then has them, you know, she pulls her wallet on. It's like, oh my God, yeah, you should come to my pure romance party. I have some invites nonchalantly. Um, yeah, so that's how I hostess coach. I love the postcards. I know they're like old school, but they work for me. Um... And that's it. So please ask me any kind of questions if something was unclear. I'm kind of a squirrel and see shiny stuff and the glare from my window. Um, so yeah, just ask me any questions, but I hope that helps. So uh, good luck with your party planning and hostess coaching.